The problem says the table below, which I'm about to show you here, uh, shows the speed of a car traveling along the x-axis as a function of time. So I can show you that right here. We have the time in seconds and we have the velocity here. So not the position, the velocity of the car and the velocity is given in miles per hour. All right, um, we have three parts. We'll do them in sequence. The first part just says draw a graph of the velocity vx versus time for the car's velocity in terms of miles per hour. So we're going to draw that graph. Part two uh, is determine, or I should say par, uh, part of part one, is to determine if the acceleration is constant or not. So we'll graph it, we'll figure out if the uh, acceleration is constant, and B, find the car's average acceleration for uh, three different time uh, intervals, zero to 2.1 seconds, 2.1 to 20 seconds, and 20 to 53 seconds. So it's basically graphing, determining from the graph if the acceleration is constant or not. But notice that we have to uh, first of all, reconcile the idea that we have the velocity given in miles per hour. We're supposed to graph this thing in miles an hour and figure out if the acceleration is constant. But later on in the problem, when it asks us to find the acceleration, it wants it in meters per second squared. So we, we have some uh, juggling to do uh, in, in the future. But let's do first things first. Let's graph this thing. So we have a time scale going from zero up to a little past 50 seconds. We have a velocity scale going from zero up to a little bit past 250 seconds three miles per hour. So <clears throat> I just threw this together. We have a time axis that goes uh, up till 50 seconds and a velocity axis miles per hour and it goes up to 300 because the biggest number we have is 253 here. So let's just take a look at a couple of different points on this graph. At uh, zero seconds, the velocity is zero. So we know that the object is not moving uh, initially. So we have a, a point right here. Second point we have is at 2.1 seconds, we have 60 miles per hour. So these numbers are a little weird, but 2.1 and 60 miles per hour. All right, so here it's 10 seconds, 2.1 seconds, this is, this is uh, five seconds. So 2.1 seconds is about this, and it was 60 miles an hour, and this scale is not great, but you can still say that if this is 50, 60 is gonna be a little bit above it. This is just a sketch, okay? Don't, don't get too wrapped around the axle if it's exact. It doesn't have to be exact, it's just a sketch. The next point that we have is at 20 seconds, we're going 200 miles an hour. So at 20 seconds, we're going 200 miles an hour. This one's very easy to find. We'll just find the intersection here. So it's something like this. And then finally, at 53 seconds, we're going 253 miles an hour. So at 50, this is 50, so a little bit past 50 is 53, and this is 250 miles an hour. We're going a little bit faster than that, 253. So we'll go a little bit to the right of this and a little bit up from this, and we'll put our dot right there. So I'm not gonna be able to draw a straight line. Uh, now, first of all, we don't know what's happening in between. Could be a very smooth curve connecting these dots, but I don't actually know. I just have those data points. So I'm gonna just draw straight lines here. So we have a line connecting from here to here. We have, um, I know it's not gonna look straight, but it's supposed to be a straight line. Sorry about that. Make that dot a little bigger from there to there. And we have a straight line going like this. So I will try to connect them. Not gonna be exact, but you get the idea. Something like this. So we can see that our velocity is increasing in general over time when we, when we are uh, uh, going 50 seconds into the future, about a minute in the future, we're going extremely fast, right? And of course we're starting, we're not moving at all. So the first part of the question says, draw the velocity versus time and uh, determine if the acceleration is constant. So what does constant acceleration mean? We, we know that the acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity right? Uh, or another way of looking at it is, if you want to look at two different points on a velocity graph, the acceleration or the average acceleration in between two points on a graph is the slope of the line connecting those two points. So between this point and this point, we have a slope of this line, which would be very steep. The, between this point and this point, the average acceleration is the slope of this line segment here. Between this point and this point, the average acceleration is the slope of this line right here. But this slope, you can see, is different than this slope, and this slope is different than this slope. So the question is, is it a constant acceleration? The only way that you can have a constant acceleration is if all of the acceleration for all time is the same number. Like maybe it's like three meters per second squared. And that number, when you plot it, on a graph, on an acceleration graph would be a flat line because it won't ever change. But we can see that the acceleration here is 
different than the acceleration here, and that's different than this, because the slope of this and the slope of this and the slope of this, the derivative of this thing, is always different. So it cannot be constant acceleration. Without doing any calculations, you know that the answer is no. Not constant acceleration. All right, now let me ask you a question. Before we do any calculations, and I've already forgotten the answers, before we do any calculations, which part of this uh, region, wh which part of the journey has the highest acceleration and which one has a lower acceleration? Well, this is not an acceleration graph, it's a velocity graph, but we know that acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So again, the slope of this part of the curve is the acceleration. The slope of this is the acceleration. The slope of this is the acceleration. Which of these three regions has the lowest slope? This is closest to a flat line, lowest slope, medium slope, highest slope. Lowest acceleration, medium acceleration, this part of the journey right off the line when it started had the highest acceleration, the highest change in velocity, the highest and steepest slope of the velocity curve. So that wasn't really a question, but I, I just think it's important. All right, part B, uh, it basically says, find the car's average acceleration for the time intervals, the three different time intervals, zero to uh, 2.1 seconds, which is this interval, and then this one here, which is 2.1 to 20 seconds, and then 20 seconds to 53 seconds. Those are the three intervals that we want to find here. But the problem is the velocities are all given to us in miles per hour, and we want the accelerations in meters per second, so we have to do some unit conversions. So we're not going to bother converting zero. We know that if we make another uh, velocity in meters per second here, we know that we're going to still get zero meters per second when you have zero miles an hour. But let's go over here and take 60, and this is miles per hour. How would you convert this to meters per second? Well, you can do it lots of different ways, but we're going to do it by saying that one mile is 1609 meters, so the miles cancel, okay? And then, so now you have mile, or meters per hour, but we also know that one hour is uh, 3600 seconds because there's 60 minutes in a second and 60 um, seconds in a minute. And this hour cancels with this one. So whenever you take 60 and multiply by 1,609, divide by 3,600, you will get 26.82 meters per second, the only units left uh, meters per second. So I can go up here and I can just fill out this table and say this corresponds to 26.82 meters per second in this column. Now I don't want to waste your time doing all of these things, but if I take the next one here and stick it in this position, the 200 times 1609 divided by this, I'm going to get 89.39 meters per second. And if I take the last one, 253, and put it in here, 253 times 1609 divided by 3600, I'm going to get 113.1, and I'll, the units are the same, meters per second. So the bottom line in the table that, that we get from unit conversion is zero, and then we have, let me just double check, 26.82, 26.82, and then we have 89.39, and we have 113.1, these are in meters per second. All right, so now that we have this information, how do we find the acceleration in the different regions? So from the time of zero to the time of 2.10 seconds, which is the first interval in time here, which is corresponding to this little interval in time here, which we're thinking is the highest acceleration of the bunch, what is that acceleration? Well, we're looking at the average acceleration, but if, if it really is a line in between here and not a curve, then it's going to be exactly the same thing as the average acceleration because uh, the slope of a line is a constant. And so what we're going to say is the average acceleration is equal to uh, delta V over delta T. And delta V, when you look at the two uh, time, the two velocities here, you get 26.82 minus the original uh, velocity of zero, and then you have the original time, which is 2.1, and then minus the original time. So you have subtraction here and subtraction here. And so what you get is 26.82 divided by 2.10, and so what you get is 12.8 meters per second squared. Now I can tell you right now, because I have the answers right in front of me, this is the, going to be the highest number that we're going to calculate, because it's the highest slope of any of the little segments we have on our graph. All right, but let's go ahead and verify it. 
and continue on with part B. So we want to find the acceleration in this window, the average acceleration there. So the average, whoops, average acceleration, which is the same thing, delta V divided by delta T. And so here, the delta V, 89.39 minus this one, 89.39 minus 26.82, so we took this minus this, and we'll do the same with time. 20 minus 2.10. 20 minus 2.10. So when you take 89.39, subtract 26.82, you get 62.57. And then down here, 20 uh, minus 2.1, you get 17.9. And when you take 62.57 divided by this, you get 3.50, and the units are meters per second squared. You can already see that this acceleration is smaller than this one, which makes total sense because the slope of this part of the journey, the slope of the velocity, is shallower than this one. So we're increasing our velocity faster here than we are right here. And you can see it because it's rocketing up, and here it's starting to bend over. Now let's take a look at the third region, which is this region here. So subtracting the velocities would be like this. So we have the average delta V over delta T. So the change in velocity, 113.1 1, 1, uh, velocity, and then subtracting here, 89.30. Uh, I may have gestured here. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I meant to say this is the third region we're doing here. So 89.39, 89.39. And for the time, it's 53 minus 20, 53. Uh, 0.0 minus 20.0. So we have 113.1 minus 89.39. We get 23.71. And on the bottom, the 53 minus the 20, we get 33. So when you take 23.71 divided by 33, you get 0 0.7185 meter per second squared. That's the acceleration. All right, that's the answer to the problem. And notice that in the third region, this is an acceleration that's the smallest. It's, it's smaller than this one, and it's smaller than this one. And from the graph, this one is smaller, the slope of this one, I should say, is smaller than this slope, and the slope of this slope is smaller than this one. So the highest slope, which means the highest acceleration, is in the very beginning of the journey. And even though we're going really, really fast at the end of journey, we're not increasing our speed as fast here as we are here. So this point of this problem, it, it, these numbers don't matter. Th th these numbers don't matter at all. The only thing this problem is trying to impress upon you is it's difficult in the beginning to separate in your mind velocity and acceleration because we don't think about it that much. We floor, you know, we hit the gas in the car, we accelerate, we know we're going faster. But what I'm trying to say is at the end of the journey, the speed here is like 200 miles an hour. It's very, very, very fast. We're going really, really fast, high velocity, but we're not increasing our velocity as much, and so the acceleration is low. So you can be going fast, like rocket ship fast, but not accelerating that much. And that's going to show up as a curve that's very high on the velocity, but not increasing very high, because the acceleration is the slope of the line, not how high the line is, the slope of the line. Same thing here. At the beginning of the journey, we're not going very fast. We're going pretty slow but we are increasing our speed very, very fast. That's why the acceleration is very high there. So acceleration and velocity, two totally different animals. Acceleration is just how fast you are increasing or decreasing your velocity. And so when we start our journey, we have the highest acceleration followed by the medium acceleration followed by the very slowest of the acceleration happening toward the end. All right, solve this one uh, yourself. Make sure you understand the concept here calculating average acceleration and comparing them and that kind of thing. That's the point of this. And then follow me on to the next lesson. We'll solve some more problems and continue building your skills with acceleration. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.